What's going on guys? My name is Ojo Easy. In this video, I'll show you how to install Kali Linux on VirtualBus step by step. Now, what you're looking at is a post I wrote a few months ago detailing the exact same steps I'm going to take in this video tutorial. Now, um, this post is packed with a lot of information and, you know, showing two methods. But I'm not going to take the time to go over why there are two methods and why I'm recommending one over another. So what I aim to do with this post is to just show um, straight to the point how to install Kalinos and VirtualBus. Okay, now if you're ready, there are only four steps we need to um, to install Kalinos in VirtualBus on our Windows computer. And they are, if you don't already have VirtualBus, we're going to download and install that. Then we're going to download our Kali Linux ISO file. Next, we're going to create a Kali guest on VirtualBus and then we're going to begin the installation of Kali on VirtualBus. Now, for the first step, we are going to the Oracle VirtualBus site and we're going to download VirtualBus from there. Now, open that in a new tab. And secondly, we are downloading our Kali Linux ISO file. I'll open that in a new tab as well. Now, when I tab over to the Oracle's official website, here yeah, we can download the um, VirtualBus binary for Windows hosts. If I'm a Mac OS user, by all means use this link. Now I'm going to click on this and the download will begin immediately. But I'll cancel this out because I already have this file downloaded beforehand to save some time. I'll close this tab out. Now the Kalilinos downloads page, what we are looking for is the Kalilinos less 64 bit. Again, if you want to know the reason why I'm using the light version over the maybe the Kalilinos light, the Kalilinos uh, 64 bit or the Kalilinos large 64 bit. Go ahead and read that post. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, when we click on the Kalinus Last 64 bit, the download will begin immediately as well. If you check out this version, this is 2019.4. It doesn't really matter what is showing there. Just be sure you download the latest and greatest when you come. By the time you come, it might be 2020 point whatever or 2021. Who knows? Just make sure you're downloading the latest version. I'm going to cancel this out too because I have, in fact, downloaded both of those files right here to save time now the next step we need to take is to install VirtualBus now to do that um, um, simply double click this um, file and it will take you over a couple of screens where you're going to click next 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 then it will show you a, a warning you click yes for that warning and the installation will begin after that VirtualBus will launch I'm choosing not to show how to install that because it's pretty very easy to do now, when VirtualBus has launched, you will be presented with this screen right here um, where you can begin the installation. Now, this is VirtualBus. So, you won't have this machine right here because this, is, was a, this was a test installation I did while I was preparing for this tutorial. Now, the next step we're going to take is to create our Kali Guest OS. And to do that, click on Tools and click New. Now, I want you to go down here and click Expert Mode. This will bring up this one page dialog where we can fill almost all the details we need to create our Kali guest OS. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to give this um, um, Kali instance a name. And for this, I'm going to give it Kali Linux. And if you observe closely, the moment I wrote Kali Linux on this name, this type changed to Linux. But if per venture you already changed based on the name you gave it, just come in down here and change this to Linux. Why? Because Kali Linux. Our OS is a Linux operating system, obviously. Alright, for the version, we're going to select Debian 64 bit. But if for, by, for any reason you come in here and all you can see are 32 bit options, um, that, that simply means you do not have virtualization um, enabled in your BIOS. But I'll leave a link in the description to a video showing where I um, provide a solution to that. It's pretty easy to do. Now, the memory size. This is the amount of RAM our machine is going to run on when it's on operation. Now, for, for this physical machine I have right here, I have 8 gigs of RAM installed on it. So, I'm going to, you're going to set whatever RAM you need your, your virtual, your Kali Linux machine to operate on. You can move this slider to select whatever RAM you need, but make sure you do not allow it to exceed this green portion of this line right here. I'll leave this to 1 gigabyte because it's going to just work fine because we are downloading because we are using the Kali Linux Lite ISO file. Now, every other thing is set. Click on create. On this page, the only thing we need to do is to set the size of the virtual hard disk. 
for our Linux operating system we are installing. Meaning now the system is recommending 8 gigs, but I'm going to bump this up to around 20 gigs will just be fine because this will allow us to cater for the applications we're going to install on Kali Linux um, afterwards. All right, every other thing is set, click create. Now, for the last step before our Kali guest OS is complete, we need to add the um, Kali Linux operating system we downloaded earlier. Now, click this, why this is clicked, why this is selected, rather, click on settings and on storage, click this empty and click this, this icon right here. Then choose a virtual hard disk. Now, if you're coming in here for the first time, you won't have all this. What you're gonna do, what you need to do is to click add here and locate where you have downloaded your Kali Linux ISO file. Click that and open it. Then choose. Now that you fill that um, machine right here, you click OK. Okay, now we succeeded in creating our Kali guest. Now we need to launch this virtual machine and begin the installation. You can either double click on this machine right here or click on this start arrow. But I'm going to double click to start this machine. All right, um, this is this is just a notification. You can cancel that or you could just reselect your machine, but I'm going to cancel out of this. Okay, now I could either use my um, arrow keys on my keyboard to move and select options on this virtual window, but um, or you could click into the window and that will capture your mouse. When your mouse is captured, it simply means your mouse can't get out of this window unless you press the control key on the right side of your keyboard. When I press that, my mouse is on J again, and this is essentially what this text here is telling us. So I'm going to use my keyboard arrow to select graphical install to begin our installation. Now, the machine is asking us to select a language. English is just fine for me. And the location, United States is fine as well. And American English for my keyboard is fine too. You can Now you can go ahead and select whatever you want on those settings. It's just uh, pretty down to user preference. Now, additional components is going to load. This is going to take quite a bit of time. I'm just going to fast forward out of this. All right. Now for the host name, Kali is just fine. Click continue. Now for the domain name, since we're not going to add this computer, um, this virtual machine to a domain, we we'll leave this as nil and we'll continue. Now it's time to set a password for our root user. Go ahead and put a strong password here, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to put a weak password. Now the root, the root password is the um, is like the administrator password you have on Windows. So this is like the highest password. So make sure you don't forget what you are setting here because this is what you're going to use to log in. Now for the time zone, Eastern is fine for me. Go ahead and choose whatever you wish. Now we are at the disk partitioning section. We are going to leave this as guided and using the entire disk. Then select our hard disk we created. And we're going to write all files into one partition. You can do separating of um, partitions into different, but that, that's not really, that doesn't really matter. That doesn't really um, um, hurt us in our installation. This is just fine. We're going to use all files in one partition, in one partition, I beg your pardon. Now we're going to write that changes to disk and we are going to select yes to confirm that. Now the system is going to install. This is going to take a pretty long time for it to complete. I'm just going to skip ahead to the next step and I'll be back when the system has finished installing. Okay, do you want to install Grub? Yes, we want to install Grub. And where do you want to install it? On, that, on our hard disk we have on file. Now the installation is finishing and if everything went on fine, which it should, then the next, it, it, should, it should do some magic and at the end, we should get onto the login screen of Kali Linux where we are required to put in our passwords. And now, finally, the installation is completed and we are at the login screen. Now, our username is root. Then the password is whatever password you set during the installation. For me, type in the weak password I set, then we log in. 
now let me go into full screen mode here and show you something now that we're on full screen you immediately observe that this window is not being showed shown on full screen yet so that is a normal functionality but it's a problem and we can fix that using something called the virtual bus guest additions and what that does is help us fix this issue of full screen mode and also gives us the capability to share our clipboard data um, bi-directionally or and also drag and drop features whereby we can drag an application or a folder from um, our um, host OS down to this operating system and vice versa. So I'm not going to show that in this video. In the next video, I'll show you how to install VirtualBus guest additions and also some housekeeping we need to do on this um, uh, Kali guest OS before it is optimal and ready for use as our hacking platform. If you do have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Like this video if it really helped you. See you on the next one.